Hello again, this is Lillian Bell from Lillian Bell Books. I'm about to read you book three entitled Where Are the Christmas Bells? Joey and Paws watched the steam train climb the hill and rush by. It melted into the bushland, disappearing without a trace. They had got used to seeing the rumbling bush monster and could play in the tall grass now without fear. Joey and Paws were playing their favourite game, hide and seek. It was such fun. Paws always had the advantage. He could stretch and look over the top of the blady grass. Paws was much bigger than Joey and could jump and blend into the grass and remain motionless if he wanted. While playing, Joey glanced up and saw Blossom peeping out from some gum trees. Come and play with us, he shouted. But Blossom just disappeared behind a clump of leaves. That's odd, thought Joey. Blossom is usually so friendly. Joey approached the tree and Paws followed. What's up, Blossom? said Joey. I'm feeling sad. There are no more flowers left, said Blossom. What does she mean, thought Joey. Blossom was surrounded by flowers. In fact, there were so many flowers he could scarcely see her. Blossom could see Joey was confused. Not these flowers, silly, she said. The red bell flowers. I don't feed on them, but they're part of my life. I love to sway off their long, slender stalks and watch the honey eaters feed on them. Every summer there are fields of them all the way to the horizon. They are so different compared to the gum flowers with their short, stubby stalks, she said. Blossom continued on. I've looked everywhere. There is no scarlet in the grassland, no splashes of colour on the edge of the wetlands, no bell flowers on the hillside, nothing. They just don't exist anymore. By now they should be in full bloom and there should be fields of them, she said sadly. Joey didn't have a great love for flowers, but he sensed something wasn't quite right. He could feel a nagging sensation in his stomach, a sensation he had felt before. Things were changing in his world yet again. Joey turned to pause. Come on, let's go and find these flowers, pause. Will you join us, Blossom? said Joey. Yes, I will lead the way, she said excitedly. Blossom moved with ease through the bushland, and when they came to a large cotton tree, she was hard to see in the tangle of branches which radiated from its centre. She stopped momentarily. Her head disappeared into a large yellow flower. Suddenly she was on the move again, scampering effortlessly on. They continued to follow Blossom to the spot where the flowers should be. See? The flowers are all gone, she said, sadly. Even on the edge of the wetland, they can't be found, she continued. They all gazed intently into the grass on the edge of the wetland, scanning the area for a splash of colour. Paws had the best view. If he wanted, he could stretch his body up high and see over the top of the grass, way off into the distance. Suddenly Paws shouted excitedly, Look over there! I can see something red! he exclaimed. They all moved towards the spot and stared at a single huge red bell flower gently moving to and fro on the summer breeze. Blossom clung to the tall stalk, looking sad. Where have all the flowers gone? she said with a tear in her eye. Joey and Paul started to feel a little anxious. Something felt different. The grass wasn't so long. Never had they been to this part of the bush. Right in front of them was a large tree stump with things hanging off it, but these weren't little branches. They were hard and felt cold. Further along was another stump attached by these long, hard things, and further along another. They continued on in a line and then were hidden by tall grass. Suddenly they heard noises a little way off. Sounds they hadn't heard before. High-pitched squealing and soft, low sounds. Blossom scampered fearlessly up the tree stump 
seemingly unaware it was different. She suddenly gasped. Oh no! This is the problem. The humans are picking the flowers. Joey felt a shiver run through his body. He had seen the timber getters before. One even tried to snatch him out of the tree. But he didn't realize that they like flowers too. Paws and Joey moved slowly through the grass, where Blossom was perched on the tree stump. Aren't you scared of standing on that thing? said Joey nervously. This is just a fence post. They use to divide off the land, she said, impatiently. Joey was amazed that Blossom knew so much about the humans. This is what we need to be worried about, Joey. These humans are taking the flowers and changing our world forever, exclaimed Blossom. They all gazed at the humans picking the flowers. One of them picked up a large bunch. Suddenly, without warning, both humans looked up in their direction and smiled. They had spotted Blossom perched on the fence post. Come on, quickly! It's time to go, she said. Blossom was ahead of them. Joey was amazed how quickly and gracefully she could move, where he, on the other hand, was clumsy and awkward. Shortly they were back in the tangled cotton tree, peering out at the humans some distance away. Blossom was deep in thought, dreaming about her bell flowers. She would go back when the humans had gone and enjoy the last of the red bell flowers and cling to their tall, slender stems and dream of past summers. The landscape was changing rapidly and this might be the last time she would see her beloved bell flowers. Joey looked at Blossom. He could see she was sad. What can we do, Blossom? he asked in a soft voice. Nothing, Joey. We can't do anything. By next summer, they will be gone, she continued. Did you notice the humans were not just picking the flowers, but they were pulling them up by their roots? They take a long time to reach that height. I fear that next summer there won't be any left, she said sadly. Joey climbed up the trunk of the gum tree and watched Paws bounced off into the long grass, and then he was gone. Blossom lingered momentarily and looked in the direction of where the flowers were located, and then too she was gone. Joey continued to climb higher and higher and thought of the day searching for flowers. One thing he remembered was that the humans called them Christmas bells. He wondered why. Joey didn't know how popular these Christmas bells were with the humans, only that they loved them and would put huge bunches of them in their homes. Blossom was right. Very soon they would be gone forever. These wildflowers of the bush. I hope you enjoyed that story about the Christmas bells. This is Lillian Bell signing off. And very shortly, I will be reading book four, entitled Where the Humans Live. So don't forget to come and visit me at Lillian Bell Books. See you soon. Bye for now. <laughs>